There's a lot of companies out there right now trying to create the best thin and light ultrabook while also providing great performance. And a lot of them miss the mark. They get the ultrabook part right. Thin, light, good build quality, great materials. But then when it comes to the performance, it really lags. And some companies get the performance right, but then when you get to the build, it's chunky and it's really not as thin and light as you would hope for. But when it comes to the ASUS Republic of Gamer Flow X13, it's as perfect as you can get in the current day and age that we are in. Battery life, performance, build quality, assembly, usability. It has all of that going for it and a little bit more. The secret to becoming a successful content creator is of course growing your audience, but the way in which you do that is keeping people on your content longer. And Filmora allows me to take my basic, feel like you're in my office tech reviews and take them to the next level with amazing effects, AI tools to crop me out of the background, and they even have tools that help me boost my productivity by automatically generating captions as well as title description that I need to put into my videos to make sure they reach the audience I am looking to reach. Not only do they have all these amazing tools, but they're already pre-installed. You don't have to learn any fancy cropping or editing tools or visual effects. They're already baked into Filmora, so you're good to go right away. In order to get started right now and test out Filmora's amazing editing software, head down in the description of this video and get signed up. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Now, when I say a little bit more, you can actually plug in a full desktop GPU into this laptop, what's known as the XG Mobile, into the port here on the left side panel. This takes a thin and light ultra book to the performance of a desktop PC. Now, unfortunately at this moment, I've yet to be able to get the latest XG Mobile to test the performance, but from the previous year, this thing is an absolute rocket ship when plugged into the XG Mobile. Now on top of the XG Mobile connector port, you actually have a USB type C port embedded into the XG Mobile. So if you don't have the XG Mobile plugged in, you have one USB type C, a micro SD card reader, HDMI, and a headphone jack. On the right side panel, we have another USB type C and a USB type A. Now keep in mind, your charger is going to be using a USB type C to keep charged. I think the micro SD card reader is annoying from a connectivity standpoint of bringing in footage from an SD card, but from a storage expansion standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. You can go ahead and take a 512 or one terabyte micro SD card, slide it in and expand your storage very quickly without having to take off the bottom cover. So it's really great for creators or business people that are on the go that need more storage. and They don't wanna carry around a bunch of big SSDs. So from from a thin and light ultrabook on the go friendly laptop, it's a genius move. And once again, it's why I think this laptop is the perfect mix for a thin and light on the go ultrabook with a ton of performance. Now the two models before me are different in spec. I have the Ryzen 9 7940HS with integrated graphics on this side. Over here, this is the Ryzen 9 7940HS with a dedicated GPU, the RTX 4070. Now, this laptop comes with 16 gigs of RAM and this one with 32. So you're somebody who's a business owner or a student and you don't need GPU performance, you're not a gamer on the day-to-day -day going around town, you just want a thin and light laptop with really great performance for productivity, streaming video playback, multitasking, then the non-dedicated GPU version is gonna be a better price, get great battery life, and provide amazing build quality, all with the large new and improved trackpad. The big hindrance to this laptop last year was its small trackpad. We'll get into that in just a minute. However, if you're somebody who's doing on-the-go video editing, you want more ceiling in regards to maybe 3D modeling or Photoshop or After Effects or Blender, or maybe you're a gamer and you wanna do some gaming on the side, then the RTX 4070 version is the way to go. Now checking out the battery life for each of these laptops, they're gonna be the same from regards to my battery life test. The reason is I turn them both on iGPU mode, so only the integrated graphics are running when I run my battery life test, but I must say they are amazing. Almost 12 hours of productivity, almost 10 hours of streaming video playback, six hours of Photoshop work, and about four hours of video editing work. And this is all at 60 Hertz refresh rate on the screen, 20% screen brightness, eco mode in the Asus Armory Crate Center and also on silent. So the dedicated GPU is turned off. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of these models, you can head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, these two models do have different screens. On the RTX 4070 version, we have a QHD screen. And on the non-dedicated GPU version, without the RTX 4070, you have a full HD screen. So if you want a sharper, more color accurate screen, I would go for 
the RTX 4070 version with the QHD screen. However, they're both great. They have great brightness, color gamut range, and Delta E. You can see the difference between the two uh, coming up on the screen. Now, one thing that really stands out about these two laptops is the storage is upgradable. You can swap out the M.2 drive that is inside of the laptop. However, the RAM is soldered to the motherboard. So if you purchase the integrated graphics version, you're gonna get 16 gigs of RAM and that's it. If you purchase the RTX 4070 version, you're gonna get 32 gigs of RAM and that's it. That's where it stays. So great options as far as getting 32 gigs of RAM with the RTX 4070 version. They didn't bottleneck us at 16 gigs of RAM, which so many companies do. However, it's not upgradable, just keep that in mind. The ASUS Republic of Gamer Flow X13 is so thin, so light, and is so much features and performance packed into it. You see the weight and thickness coming up on the screen. It is so well assembled to the tap test. It sounds amazing. If you go ahead and I try and flex the chassis, can't get it to barely flex, it's, a great build quality. It is one of my favorite thin and light, small form factor laptops from 2023 and over the past three years. It is a fantastic laptop. Now let's go ahead and get into the interior as we make our way towards the performance benchmarks. Keep hanging in there. We're getting closer and closer. Now, as you go ahead and you look at the interior of the laptop, you can see we have the new and improved large glass trackpad. The keyboard sits inside of this nice kind of lowered bed. Very nice keyboard, it has really nice responsiveness. It's quiet, it has a medium key press with also a very quiet trackpad. We have a full size shift key on the right side, a three, four shift key on the left side, full size arrow keys, backspace, and you have some fantastic function buttons. Fan modes, keyboard backlighting, brightness up and down, speaker up and down, and also jump into your Armory Crate Center very quickly. And just like every other fantastic Republic of Gamer laptop, you have all the custom functionality that you would need inside the Armory Crate Center. Ultimate mode, standard mode, ecurd mode, ecurd? Eco mode, silent performance, turbo, and way more customization than I care to name at this moment, but it has it all right here inside of Armory Crate. Now, another thing that is absolutely worth mentioning is the tablet mode. You can quickly flip the laptop over and you are good to go. Whether you have a presentation or you wanna work on some design, photography, or digital art, you have everything you need right here. I have the Asus Pen 2.0, and that pen works very well with this laptop. It's very responsive. It does feel a little glossy on the screen. It doesn't have that paper-like feel. This is more of a glossy nib, um, but you could go ahead and test out a few different nibs, maybe put a uh, paper-like screen protector on this if that's kind of the feel that you want with your laptop. The pen is very responsive. And the really cool thing about tablet mode is I can actually use my fingers to zoom in and out. So I can go like this and zoom in on my canvas and then zoom out on my canvas. I think that's really nifty that you don't even have to use a mouse to control that. And then I'll go ahead and grab the pen tool. And as you can see, it's very responsive. You can do a light brush stroke or you can get a heavier brush stroke by how hard and light you push. And as you can see, it is very responsive. There's no lagginess at all with the laptop performance. I can move around with two fingers. I can zoom in, I can zoom out. It's very handy working on this device and it's easy to hold in your hand. On the higher tier version, it has the 32 gigs of RAM and the RTX 4070. This is a powerful laptop, especially if you're doing a lot of layers inside of Photoshop. This has all the performance that you'll need. Speaking of performance, let's jump into the benchmark so you can check out the performance differences between these two laptops and other laptops available on the market. Now going ahead and looking at Geekbench single core and multi-core, of course, we're gonna see very similar scores because they are the same processor with dedicated GPU versus integrated graphics. But compared to other laptops on the market, this thing is neck and neck with with the top performers both in Geekbench single core and multi-core. However, single core is a little bit more on par with other laptops. The multi-core performance of this laptop is not as suitable as say something like the i9-13900H or the Ryzen 9 7945HX inside of something like the Strix SCAR 17. But as we get into the real world benchmarks, you can see inside of Photoshop, this laptop has no issues in both the dedicated GPU SKU and the integrated graphics SKU. 
Now we're gonna have lesser performance with the integrated graphics at a 967 inside of Photoshop versus the 1133, but that's not a huge difference. It's under 200 points between the two. However, where I would say a big difference would be made is in the 32 gigs of RAM. So the advantage of the dedicated GPU version is you're gonna get more RAM. So if you're a heavy Photoshop user, I would definitely recommend the dedicated graphics version with the RTX 4070. If you're a mid to light Photoshop user, then you'd be totally fine the integrated graphics. Earlier this year on my channel, I talked to Peter Richardson. He's a published comic book artist, and he says he uses very, very heavy Photoshop files with a ton of layers, and that causes the laptops to slow down a lot at 16 gigs of RAM. He really takes advantage of 32 gigs of RAM, and I think if you're a heavy Photoshop user, that would be important to you as well. Now, looking at After Effects, it's not even a competition. I honestly did not even try to run After Effects on the integrated graphics version, and 16 gigs of RAM, it just doesn't have what it takes. So, if you're an After Effects user, definitely go with the RTX 4070 version with the 32 gigs of RAM. Now moving down the line to Blender Classroom, same thing. You're gonna want a GPU for Blender Classroom. The score was good. It wasn't amazing, but it was good. It actually outperformed last year's Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X16. So really good performance out of this laptop, especially that it's a thin and light 13 inch laptop. Looking at Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo, this laptop is outperforming some of the laptops from this year, as well as a lot of the big boys from years past. So a lot of times what I try to do is put this in perspective. Some of the best laptops for last year don't even come close to performing as well as this laptop this year. Now, the reason I bring that up is you think, well, shouldn't laptops always be getting better? Yes, they should. But think about this thin and light laptop performing as well as say a Lenovo Legion 5 from last year or an HP Omen from last year. It's incredible to see a laptop of this size perform as well or better than some of the best performing thick chunky laptops from years past. So performance is evolving. You're getting more in a smaller, thinner package, which is awesome. Now looking at SolidWorks, that just is a sad story. SolidWorks is a whole nother conversation. Workstation GPUs is what SolidWorks wants or Radeon GPUs from AMD. So just if you're SolidWorks, this isn't the laptop for you. Now looking at Premiere Pro playback, 4K had zero drop frames. 6K B-RAW for this laptop had 122 drop frames, which is good, especially for the thin and lightness of this laptop. And then 1,548. So excellent results for this laptop. I'm very impressed with it. Even with the integrated graphics, you're not gonna get amazing performance out of this laptop. As you can see with 4K, we had 253 drop frames at full quality zero drop frames at 1080p, and then 6K red footage about 15,000. So if you're gonna be uh, trying to do 6K, do not go for the integrated graphics. That is a terrible idea, but you can definitely get away with 1080p and 4K video editing on the integrated graphics version. Taking a look at the export times, not a shabby export time from the integrated graphics, five minutes and 11 seconds. Now we saw even better results from the RTX 4070, two minutes and 37 seconds. That is totally on par with good averages, the median average out of all high performing gaming laptops. Now on the lower end, one of the best scores we've seen this year is a two minute and 17 second export time out of the Legion Pro 7i. Uh, but really you're only uh, 20 seconds behind that export time. That's fantastic. Especially for how thick and chunky the Legion Pro 7i is compared to the Flow X13. I mean, it's like not even a comparison. I mean, look at the top, top view of that. Just not portable at all. This is the on the go dream powerhouse. And even looking at the 6K export time, 19 minutes and 33 seconds is not a record setter, but something like the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra with an i9 13900H and RTX 4070 scored 21 minutes and 38 seconds. So it beat out a bigger, more seemingly capable laptop and it's thin and light on the go friendly. I'm just gonna keep saying that because it is. Throughout this video, we've talked about the pros and cons for going for integrated graphics or going ahead and getting the RTX 4070. If you're a powerhouse user, whether you're doing 3D modeling, looking towards 6K video editing, or really complex Photoshop work, or using After Effects, the dedicated GPU is the way to go. Not only do you get that dedicated GPU, but you get the 32 gigs of RAM, and it's very important for multitasking as well as multi-process apps like Photoshop, if you are doing tons of layers, that extra RAM is very, very helpful. The integrated graphics are plenty powerful for a lot of use cases. 
1080p, 4K video editing, Photoshop work, or if you're using the Adobe Creative Suite like Adobe InDesign or Adobe Illustrator, you also get incredible battery life, still a great full HD screen, a large trackpad. There is so much to offer with this laptop. Thin and light, great battery life. It to me is one of the best Ultrabooks that doesn't even really get thrown into the Ultrabook category because it's technically a gaming laptop, but without a doubt, it's an incredible buy. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to get some more perspective on the X13. I'll see you here in the next one.